This is Twit. Now, Brett in Woodridge, New Jersey. Hi, Brett. Leo Laporte, the tech guy. Oh, I thought I was finished with you. Well, I see a different question on the board. Did you want to ask about your router? Yes, I did, because I saw a show on YouTube about the DWRT. And ah, yes. So, so um, they support my Netgear WNR2000, but how is that going to improve the, 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 the router at all? It's a, it's a great question, Brett. So when you go out and you buy a Linksys or a Netgear or whatever, you buy this, uh, this router, the idea of a router, and we've all become used to it, even though this used to be, you know, network technology used to be the realm of high-priced IT guys and gals in big businesses. But now that we all have Internet and we all have, many of us have multiple devices attached to the Internet in our homes, we've all gotten used to the idea of it, having this fancy networking device called a router in our home. What does a router do? Well, you connect the router, you know this, to your internet connection, whatever that is, and then it takes that internet connection and splits it up so that other devices can do it. Sometimes it adds wireless networking, Wi-Fi, sometimes not. Now, the technical details are a little more complicated. What a router really is is a very dumb, very inexpensive computer. It has firmware, software that's running, uh, it, and what it does is it, it connects to your internet connection and it does something called network address translation in order to give each computer and device in the network its own unique internet address. This is a requirement. This is why you can't just plug them all into one you know, cable modem and, and be done with it. Um, and through network address translation, it, it sits there and, and when something, when, you know, when, you, when you go to a website, it's the beginning of a conversation. Your computer says, hello, website, sends that out through the router to that Internet address. The Internet address has to be calculated either by your computer, by the router, by your Internet service provider. But somebody then, you know, says Yahoo.com. Oh, that equals 192.168.1.1. And it goes out there and it contacts that computer and says, hello, computer, on your behalf. And the computer says, hello, you. That has to come back. Now, it hits the router. The router has to remember who said, hello, computer, and send it to that computer. So it does. That's why it's a router. It's routing traffic. And then the conversation begins. The router keeps track of all of that. If, for some reason, Yahoo.com initiates the conversation, hello, you, without your request, the router will get it and go, I don't know who you want to talk to, but I don't want to talk to you, and drop it. And that's great. That's another reason we like routers. They provide a barrier to the outside world. So Mr. Hacker Guy can't just say, hello, you, I wish to talk to you. Because if he does, the router goes, I don't know you, and drops it. Boom. This all works very nicely. It's really a very nice system, a secure system. In fact, I recommend, even if you only had one computer in your house, to use a router because it's, it's the barrier. It's a dumb barrier to the outside world. Unfortunately, the companies that make these routers, and I won't point fingers, but Linksys is one of them, that just, they, they're terrible. The software they write is terrible, full of holes. And in one particular instance, they used software uh, that was buggy to begin with and they just kind of plugged it into their router. And so there's all sorts of security issues. There's issues with something called WPS. That's the thing where you push the button on the router and somehow automatically the computer gets on it. That's horribly broken. Uh, we've seen lately that there's, uh, on some routers, a fairly large number, a problem with a particular port that instead of blocking traffic on that port, it just says, oh, yeah, come on in. We did want to talk to you. No, we didn't. And that allows hackers access to your network. So there's some, because it's the first thing on the network, it's important that it be well-written, robust, and strong. So come, a number of hackers and uh, open-source advocates have come up with some alternative router firmware. Because remember, the router is a computer. You can replace the software it's running. One of them uh, is one you were talking about, Brett, DDWRT. And if you search for that, you'll see that's probably the largest open-source project out there for routers. It's really, really great stuff. Another popular one is Tomato. So you can look for tomato router. Now, there is an issue because this is software. It has to, it has to work on your router. So you, you're going to want to make sure, A, you get a router that works with it. And Brett, you said yours does. That's good news. My recommendation is absolutely, if your router supports it, put DDWRT or tomato on there. 
because in uh, many, many cases, the software provided by the router's manufacturer is broken, is insecure, is problematic. But these open source products, projects like DDWRT, are kept up to date when these new errors, uh, you know, the WPS flaw, for instance, are discovered, they're fixed. There are a number of routers out there who have major security flaw with WPS, and they've never fixed it. Linksys, let's give you an example, has a checkbox that says turn off WPS, but it doesn't. So not only does it have the flaw in WPS that allows a bad guy access to your system, but the checkbox that says turn it off doesn't even work, doesn't do anything. Just terrible. So absolutely, uh, Brett, if you, if you have a router that supports either DDWRT or Tomato, you, you know, if, and you're fairly comfortable, uh, you know, it's not hard. Just replace the firmware. It's very much like a firmware upgrade to your router. You'll download the firmware onto a computer as a .bin file. And sometimes you can even do this directly on the router, but usually you, you download it to the, to the firmware, to the computer, and then, and then apply it to the router. There's always a risk. Same thing when you're doing a BIOS update. There's always a risk you could do something could go wrong. The power could go out during the update, for instance, and you'll have a brick. So understand there's risks with that. If your router was provided by your DSL or cable company, do not do this. That's a mistake. But if you have purchased a router that you own and it's compatible, follow the instructions carefully, and it's a fairly low-risk process that has a great payoff. Read the instructions carefully. <laughs> but, uh, Brett, I have faith that you can do this.